Well, this is another episode of the Farm News Cab Cam, sponsored by Tri-County Equipment. And today, I'm up in the Saginaw Bay region with Mark Sylvester of Sylvester Farms. Uh, we're about a half mile off the Saginaw Bay. Uh, appreciate you letting me ride along, Mark. Absolutely. Thanks so, for coming. So, Mark, tell me a little bit about your farm. Who's all involved? Uh, it's a partnership between myself, my mom, and, and uh, dad, Rich and Nancy Sylvester. Uh, I have... Uh, four full-time employees that work for us as well as my sister in the office and she helps out in the field quite a bit. Um, my wife and she helps out when she can with doing stuff and uh, I got two little boys that are, uh, are I, I'm kind of hoping that they maybe become part of the farm someday as well. So, Awesome. How old are your boys? Uh, six and four. Lincoln is six and Ivan is four. Awesome. Well, fun ages. Oh yeah, definitely. So. Uh... We're harvesting sugar beets here. Uh, tell us a little bit about the machine that we're that you're operating. This is a 2014 Vervat XL25. Uh, it was the second year that they were brought in to Michigan from their built in the Netherlands. Uh, in 2013, there was one machine that Tri County had sold, and in 14, they sold four of them. And I think there's a total of about 11 or 12 of these machines here and in Michigan uh, right now and uh, as of, as far as I know the only ones in the US uh, there's a couple of them over in Canada that are also uh, they harvest beets they grow beets for Michigan sugar as well you know the sugar beet harvester it's a, it's a big investment to make for growers um, you know when you bought this machine how did you make the decision to go with the Verhead? Uh we like the the design of the cleaning uh, where it comes off the lifters uh, with the turbine design versus the grab rolls. And uh, we just feel that it, it does a better job in, in all conditions. Um, it's been been real happy with us. The um, to, to buy it from a dealer that's uh, in business for a long time as well has really kind of helped make the decision to, uh, to go with that with this brand as well. And, so they have a dealer uh, locally that you've been working with, Tryon County. Exactly. Um, yep. Somebody that we know and we trust, and uh, um, they they have they actually have two of these machines as well on their own farm, Wadsworth Stew, and and uh, like I say, somebody know that you can trust, and having a dealer network really makes a difference to me when it comes to buying something. Have you had many issues uh, with the harvester since you've had it? Nothing. Nothing major. Uh, you know, when you come, we got all these electronics. You're going to have problems of some sorts. But, you know, when it comes to major issues, no, nothing, nothing terrible. So how many, uh, how many acres of sugar beets will you guys harvest this year with the, with the machine? Uh, right about 700 this year. And that's, okay. that's where we've been for the last few years. Uh, been, been increasing over the years from, as time goes by. Early dig started a little bit later this year, uh, a week ago, Monday on the 9th. Um, the, the tonnage isn't quite as good as it has been in the last couple of years because of the lack of rain this summer, but the sugars, sugar uh, percentages have been very, very good, and uh, so we're hoping that offsets and we can still do do well making a profit this year. Now, you serve on the sugar board, right? Yes, I'm on the board of directors. Yep. So you're part of Michigan Sugar Cooperative, which is grower-owned. Yep. Um, how many years have you been serving on the... The board. This is actually my first year on the uh, the board of directors. I was on the central district board for eight years previous. Um, my dad was on the board of directors for six years before that, and on the monitor sugar board for uh, been about 18 years before that. And my grandpa, his dad, was on the monitor sugar board for oh from about for about 20 years so oh, wow. there's been a sylvester oh, wow. on a on a beat board for, for many years for, for 50 years now so so you know what would you tell growers that may not be serving in those capacities uh you know why do you why do you do it well it's it's sugar beets have always been the one industry one crop that we that's the one that we can make money on there's been tough times for sure um but we know that it's it's something that can be profitable um, and, and beets is probably the, the crop that I put my heart into most. Uh, my dad and I always joke around how like corn and soybeans, they're, they're just a rotation crop, just a cover crop. And yeah, there's been years where you made good money on them, but you know, and that's, that was kind of an oddity, especially, you know, when I was growing up, it was always beets, you know. We always, we focus our farm on how we, 
prepare things and, and cover crops, and we always focus on beets on our own personal farm. I think a lot of guys are that way. But so with a sugar beet, um, you know, it's a high, it's a high managed crop, right? Definitely. I mean, it takes a lot, yes. lot goes into sugar beets. A lot of people don't know that if you're not into beets. Um, talk about the management of the beets and, and, and what the growing season was like this year. Uh, for ourselves, getting getting the beets planted wasn't too bad. We were able to get in. Most of my beets were planted between the uh, ninth, uh, actually would have been the seventh and tenth of April. I had one field planted on the 28th of April, which still really isn't considered late for us. Um, if we can get them in by the 1st of May, you know, they play pretty happy. Uh, when it comes to Roundup sprays, you know, glyphosate sprays, that was touchy. We added a sprayer because in June there was so much rain. We just, it was a hard time keeping up with one machine. Um, then, then it kind of quit raining, and then you, you go in the leaf spot, uh, spraying for Sacospora leaf spot in alternate area and uh, it quit raining and the disease is definitely not, it's present, but definitely not severe this year, which is a good thing. So how many times were these beets sprayed? Uh, this field here was sprayed with Roundup three times and one of those times was also with a fungicide and there was a, it have been six fungicide sprays. Wow. So, so you know, over the last 10 years, what do you think the biggest game changer has been in sugar beets? Well, in the last 10 years, I would I would actually probably say more like the last 12 years, okay. the uh, commercialization of Roundup Ready beets, along with having varieties that have nematode tolerance, okay. uh, has greatly increased our yields. Um, you can, there are some farms you just couldn't grow beets on, whether because they just had too much weed pressure. I mean, you could grow them, but you had a lot of labor into it. Um, that has really helped, and guys have taken the extra step of adding products in with the Roundup to to stop uh, spread of Roundup-resistant weeds. And then with nematodes, especially up here by the Saginaw Bay, anywhere where they've been growing beets for 100 years, uh, anywhere near the factories, Seaboyne, Croswell, Carroll, Bay City, Nematodes are definitely present, and that huh. has definitely uh, increased yields. I don't know, five, five ton or so maybe per acre. I'm guessing. Interesting. So, what is a good what's what's a good average um, per ton, um, you know, return on on beets? What are you what are you hoping for? Uh, I shoot for an average of 35 ton. Uh, you know, starting early on in the year, I, I, I kind of shoot for a 30 ton average, and okay. when we finish up. Uh, I'm, I'm shooting for 40 ton. That's kind of wow. my goal year to year. I've I've only ever hit 40 ton on three different fields, and one of them was last year. Um, I mean, I know it's capable. It's all about getting the right the right weather at the right time, and uh, wow. you know, it, and it all starts out in the spring of uh, actually the fall before the ground preparation, and and uh, in the spring with uh, planning at the right yeah. time and, and everything else. So. Now, I married into a beet family, and I, I remember okay. uh, 15 years ago when I married my wife, uh, here in 20 ton beets. Right, you know, yeah. What's, what's changed in 15 years that the yields have almost doubled? I think between practices and the genetics, the, the, like we okay. say, the GMO, the Roundup, has helped tremendously. Um, the nematodes, the genetics, the disease um, packages that the seed companies have put together has, have really have really helped out. And you think that's true in other areas like the Red River Valley and other? Absolutely, uh, yes. So it's, that's yes. not, that's nope, not, that's not just Michigan, that's everywhere. Okay. Yep, yep. You know, there's been a lot of negativity towards sugar um, over the years in the press. Mm -hmm. And I know that Michigan Sugar combats that. And yes. And talking about They do a very, food. very good job. They've really had to step up over the last couple of years on social media. And, and I, I believe you know, it's not just Michigan Sugar, it's it's the, the company as a whole, or the industry as a whole. Uh, and it's not just the GMO fight anymore, it's, it's just, sugar, it's, right? yep, yeah. yep. Uh, any other major issues that you see at the board level that, you know, you want to share or talk about? Um, there's always issues with, uh, you know, especially in Bay City, there's there's issues with people that are, live in town and and have an issue with the smell of the factory and we have spent a lot of money on taking care of that and a lot doing a lot of things to make it right and I, I know it has helped because 
over the last three years I've drove through town and you know used to you could you could definitely there was something that wasn't good but it's definitely improved so trying to be a good neighbor yeah trying to be a good neighbor that's a that's a hard thing to do and uh, being on the wrongs for me especially on the east side of Bay City but um, the smell, you know, will carry all the way across town towards yep. the out towards the you know, towards the water. Talk a little bit about the sugar facilities. How many different facilities is there that where you guys are making sugar? There's four processing plants. Like I said, Bay City is our largest. Then Seaboy, uh, Croswell, and Carroll. Uh, we also have uh, storage facilities, warehousing, and uh, used to be plants in um, uh, Carlton, Michigan, and Finley, Ohio, as well. Okay, and. Where will these beets go, and how are they how are they getting there? Uh, these we harvest. We take everything to Bay City. Um, where we're at, we're kind of located in the central uh, location of Bay City, Carroll, and Seawing. It's all within about a mile or two. You know, it's 16 to 18 miles one way from our farm. So these um, are going directly to the factory. Yep, these go directly to Bay City. Yep. yep. Right, some some growers are piling them on the headlands. Or yeah, there's some. The yep, ground. the ones that. Are, uh, they, especially in early delivery, they have the, the mouse programs now uh, for the, the ones that instead of opening the outstations, uh, there are the mouse cleaner loaders that will come in and just they'll load the beets in commercial trucks. Guys, not as many guys, uh, some of them don't have as many trucks. It's harder to get drivers. It's a long distance. It, that has been a, uh, a, a good money saver for, for Michigan sugar. Uh, on the on the uh, freight side when it comes okay. to early delivery. Yep. You guys, uh, speaking of speaking of labor, do you have any challenges uh, finding good help on the farm here? We're pretty fortunate. Like I said, I got four full-time guys that I wouldn't trade for the world. Okay. Um, got some part-time guys that are just they've been a couple of them been with me with us for 20 years, uh, driving truck. Um, some good family friends that'll help out, you know, on weekends and nights and. We're fortunate. I, it's definitely harder. I, I know it's, I mean, you look at one of our neighbors is a trucking company, excavating trucking company, and trying to find good people is hard because all the good ones have got jobs, you know, and, yeah. and that's that's a good thing. That means industry is, is, is booming and, and the, the economy is going, and that's good to see, so. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Talk a little bit about Tri County equipment. I know mm -hmm. you, you said that uh, you know service is, is 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 essential for you and having good service. Um, talk about the other equipment that you run on the farm. Um, sitting here looking at a 9460R. Um, what else do you use Tri County for? Uh, we have all John Deere tractors. Um, our sir, our John Deere combine, John Deere sprayer. Uh, we get a majority of our parts from them. Um, this 9460 yard did come from them that we actually bought from them. We have an 8330 we bought. Um, I get my all my tractors and, and combine checked over by the guys in Reese. Uh, Tri-County location, they do an excellent job. Um, and uh, the, the, like I say, the Wadsworth family, they, they've been real good to the industry, the egg industry, and, and uh, works out pretty good. So a lot of moving parts on this on this harvester. Um, what's the what's the most common thing that breaks down on, on a self-propelled harvester? <laughs> Honestly, there is there really isn't much of a common thing. We've haven't really? not had. I would say our biggest issues has been some electrical controller uh, computer type issues. Just actually had to replace the touchscreen this year when I got it out of storage this spring. It just wouldn't fire up. That had to be replaced. But you know, when you have technology, that's you know that was probably our biggest concern. And it, that that's been and it really hasn't been that big of a price problem. You know, it's just yeah. one of those things that you got to get fixed. But no, compared to our our previous, we used to have an Artsway 692, which was an excellent machine. Uh, I I just I don't break down anymore. That's it, awesome. it just it just works it was definitely a big investment uh, super happy that we did it um, wouldn't ever consider going back to a pull type and and like I said before glad to have Tri County is there backing us up we've, we've been real happy with them Mark I really appreciate letting us come out today this has been another episode of farm news cab cam brought to you by Tri County equipment
thanks for uh, letting us come along, and uh, until next time, uh, we'll catch you down the road. Absolutely. Thank you.